He's now one in six at one possession games this mm -hmm. year. Second worst to the Bengals, 0 and 8. Let's start with the Eagles offense, though, yeah. Ryan. They had the ball for 36 minutes, six for 14 on third yeah. grounds. Not great. They missed two field goals. Wentz, good. No mm -hmm. turnovers. In the end, good enough was good enough. What stood out? Well, what stood out to me was them finding ways to win this game without their main targets. They have been with, without Deshaun Jackson all year. Alshon Jeffrey, Zach Ertz gets hurt early. So here you're going to see what's usually a tail route, which will be both guys going outside. But you're going to see Dallas Goddard straighten up his route. The Jordan Lewis actually gets underneath. Watch the placement wow. of the throw here from Carson Wentz. And now this is a beautifully designed route. They're going to get a wheel route from Greg Ward Jr. in the slot. You're going to see Jordan Lewis match up top on the, on the slant. But now you have Malcolm Smith, who is just acquired by the Dallas Cowboys. He gets a little loss there. You get a big play down the sideline. And Doug Peterson does a great job here. You're going to see the motion, which lets them know that they're in man-to-man -man coverage. And you have Heath matched up against Goddard up top with all this space outside of the numbers. Watch the placement of the throw from Carson Wentz. It's back shoulder where there was space outside. He makes a huge catch. If you watch what this team did all night, Doug Peterson found the right matchups, even though they had a depleted roster. Mm. When you can do those things and you have a quarterback like Carson Wentz who can make the right throws, this is the type of wins you get. Huge game for this team, mm. huge win for the Philadelphia Eagles. As Dak said, Cowboys can still win the division if they beat the Redskins and mm -hmm. the Eagles lose at the Giants. Not impossible. Uh, only three field goals, six punts. Yeah. In the end, it's the proverbial Cowboy loss, Ryan. They just don't do enough winning things. Uh, what did you see? Well, you talked earlier about a one-possession game and their record in those games. They had an opportunity yeah. in this game. They were down eight. You had a chance to score, and you had spots to get it done. Here you're going to see Tavon Austin gets inside. Douglas is behind him. Yeah. This is a throw you have to hit. But I heard you guys speak earlier about not having opportunities in practice. Now, Michael Gallup, you have Jalen Mills beat to the outside. Ball hits you in the hands. You know why we're showing this? Because this is where Amari Cooper was on the biggest play of the season for the Dallas Cowboys where you choose to go one-on-one -on -one and throw a 50-50 ball. You know who has killed the Philadelphia Eagles since being acquired by the Dallas Cowboys? Yeah. Omari Cooper and you have that guy sitting on the sideline and that's why Jerry Jones mm. and Stephen Jones and all the rich people that sit in the suite <laughs> left early because the Dallas Cowboys didn't execute. Kellen Moore didn't, didn't use his weapons the way that he should mm. and that's why you have to depend on somebody else to beat the Philadelphia Eagles next week mm. in order for you to get into the playoffs mm, right in the face ryan clark <laughs> cowboys grounded in philly lebron sunday against the nuggets pass held out due to a thoracic muscle strain basically he got a sore rib cage first game he has missed all season uh, did not bring vino to the occasions they took on the rich rich creamy nuggets malik beasley hits that one it's 39 37 in favor of the visitors Mason Plumley. I mean, I want to run my, my offense for a big man with the hands of Mason Plumley. Jeremy Grant sinks that one. Anthony Davis in silo flotation device got that. It's the Lakers leading 51 48 there. A lot on Davis there with LBJ on the bench. Less than 40 to go in the half. Paul Millsap pulls the trigger on that one. Nails the three. Nuggets lead at 55 51. Going down the other way. Off the Rondo miss. And there's Davis. Tall guy, he, he plays above the rest of those guys, jumps up and down a lot. Uh, it was 55-53 Denver at half. They now lead by four midway through the third. Lakers hopeful their man LeBron will be healthy enough to suit up Christmas Day against the Clippers. That game, clock Eastern ABC. He has played on Christmas Day each of the past 12 seasons. He scored 338 career points on the holiday, third most ever in NBA history after Kobe Bryant. And Oscar Robertson, the big O, plays a lot on Christmas as well. LeBron needs four. And I knew they were going to lose this one. Steelers, Jets, Le'Veon Bell. Steelers won the toss. They elected to give the Jets the ball. You know black and gold was in the stands. Le'Veon came to the game in black and gold. And they went to him early and often. And then finally they score a touchdown. Great pass by Sam Darnold to Robbie Anderson. Jets were only four for 15 on third down. But they made that third down pay. Darnold, no interceptions. That's always a good thing for him. Jets up early. Devlin Hodges uh, was not good again. They're down 10 0. This is a floater of a ball that was destined to be picked off. He gets sacked for Mason Rudolph. What a, a year for TJ Watt. 
He had 13 sacks last year. He's got 14 this year. He has forced seven fumbles this year, most in the league. He forced six last year. What a draft pick, 30th overall by the Steelers out of Wisconsin back in 2017. So Rudolph comes in. He played well, actually. 14 of 20. Great ball there to Deontay Johnson, the third rounder. Boy, can the Steelers draft wide receivers in the third round out of Toledo? He's become their main dude. So the Steelers tie the game at halftime. Then, bam, Rudolph gets tackled hard. He lands on his uh, left shoulder, can't reach the handoff, and then look out below, driven hard in the turf. He leaves the game. So uh, Hodge is back into the game now. Steelers down 16 to 10. 50 seconds to go. Hodges likes to go to James Washington. He goes to him. 50-50 ball. Can't get it. It's there in his midst, but he can't squeeze it in time. May with a nice defensive play. Next play, fourth and seven. Got to have it. Juju Smith-Schuster. No. Only two catches on the day. Kind of mistimes his jump. He was on the way down. It was over that opposite shoulder. Tough catch to make. Couldn't make it. Heinz Ward, yeah, look, he's on the Jets staff. That hurts. You're a black and gold guy. Steelers lose. Not a lot to say, and appropriately so. Uh, it's just the time of year it is. It's put up or shut up time, and we didn't get the job done today. Uh, we accept responsibility for that. We're hoping and wishing again, like last year, um, waiting on guys to lose. But we really shouldn't be in that situation. Uh, we had opportunity early in the season, early and now today, uh, what, to go out and win games, to, to take ourselves out of that position. Even with all the adversity that we've been through the whole year, we still had control of our own destiny, and we would have failed that. So with the Steelers losing a golden opportunity for Tennessee, Six and two since naming Ryan Tannehill the starting quarterback. They were two and four prior. Derrick Henry, though, is out. Hamstring injury. First quarter tightens up on the Saints. A.J. Brown. Look at him go. 49-yard touchdown. Longest by a Titan slash Oiler wide receiver since Billy White Shoes Johnson in 1977. Looking good for Tennessee. Up 14-0 at home. Drew Brees to Jared Cook. Cook's had a nice NFL career. This is his 162nd NFL game. The 32-year-old, third-rounder out of South Carolina, tiptoe and in. And the Saints cut the lead to 14-10. To Alvin Kamara, weird year. Remember last year, 14 rushing touchdowns? Just his second this year. He had 18 total touchdowns last year. He's got four this year. That was his first touchdown this year since September 22nd, week three. Here we go again. That's the other touchdown of the day. 80 yards rushing. Later, here come the Titans. Down 10. We mentioned Tannehill. Six and two since they named him a starter. Completes it to Sharp. And there he goes. That's a score. And it's 24-21. Now in the fourth quarter, after a Saints touchdown, they're up by 10. Tannehill to Sharp again. It's plenty of time. And he finds a nice pass. It's 31-28. Titans ball. Two timeouts left, 4.23 to go. Tannehill, again, great protection. Nice pass over the middle to Khalif Raymond, but he fumbles and the Saints recover. T.J. Gardner-Johnson brings it deep into Titan territory. Saints take over. Saints in the red zone up by three, looking for the touchdown. There's Michael Thomas. He breaks the record for most receptions in a season in NFL history, 144. It was Marvin Harrison's record. It's now Thomas's record. He finishes the game with 145 catches on the year. Breeze Thomas. Boy, the fourth-year guy out of Ohio State is a gem. Saints win, Titans lose. We understand the situation, and, and next week we have an opportunity to, uh, to win to get in. But for me personally, it's just it's tough to lose a game, especially when we had a shot there you know, in the fourth quarter, down three. Um, you know, I had a great feeling about it. I thought we were going to go down and, and win the game. We weren't able to do that. I think that just the, the approach that the, um, you know, the playoffs have started uh, essentially for us because uh, when you get into any kind of playoff, that when you win, you move on to the next step, and when you lose, uh, you're done. And so I think that that's, uh, that's really where we're at right now. 
Tennessee leapfrogs Pittsburgh and is now the wild card team because the Steelers lost to a conference foe, and both Pittsburgh and Tennessee are six and five in the AFC. Strength of victories is why Tennessee is now in the playoffs with a win next week, or losses by both the Steelers at Baltimore and the Colts at Jacksonville. The Steelers must beat the top seeded Ravens, who will sit some starters. They got the one seed wrapped up. Steelers also need the Titans, of course, to lose at Houston. Another option for Pittsburgh, they can lose to Baltimore and still get in with losses by both the Titans and the Raiders and a Colts win. Why does the Raider wear that patch? Well, my guess is he stabbed himself in the eye with Matt Patricia's pencil out of frustration trying to calculate the math of Oakland making the playoffs. Like, what is one step above preposterously improbable? The Raiders needed to beat the Chargers Sunday and also have the Jets, Saints, Ravens, and Colts win. Then next week, they had to have five more things fall exactly right. Dumbing it down to its simplest probability, Raiders need to flip a coin and have it come up heads 10 times in a row. There's roughly a 1 100th of 1% chance that can happen. Almost hopeless, still more likely than Jerry Jones refusing a postgame interview. <laughs> Step one, Raiders, Chargers, and yes, the other four things did happen already. Early first quarter, we have no score. Third and six, Raiders, their own 44. They're playing in the soccer stadium. Hunter Renfro, 56-yard touchdown. Renfro, the rookie. His first career 100-yard receiving game in college or pro. Remember, he was in college for 13 years. Finished with 107 <laughs> yards. Early third quarter, Raiders lead 14-7. Carr throwing the magic bean to Darren Waller. Across the middle. That's 20-yard goal. Threatening DeAndre Washington. Pounds it in. Raiders lead 21-7. Uh, the Raiders brought most of the fans in this game. At times, uh, the Chargers at home had to use a silent snap count later in the third. Fourth and two for the Chargers. Ball on the 46. There you go. Phillip Rivers cannot hear. Got to call a timeout. That didn't have anything to do with the outcome of the game. But it, being someone that remembers what it used to be like in home games, it, it was it's pretty it's pretty bad. You know. So again, appreciate the Charger fans that are out there. But. Uh, it is uh, disheartening, to say the least. Yeah, you figure home game on our side. Later in the drive, first and 10, Rivers. Keenan Allen, one of his favorite targets. 18 yards, down to the one. Melvin Gordon, he's from Wisconsin, I'm from Wisconsin. Badgers in. Chargers trail 21-14, so the cheese a little more binding. 24-14, Raiders tack on a field goal. Rivers got it again. He's deep down there, about the nine-yard line. Doesn't see an open receiver. Throws that one away. <laughs> Good throw. Settle for a field goal. Ends in a kick. Not bad. 24-17. They're going to get it back. 43 seconds to go. Washington takes the handoff on third and 11 and gets 13. Quarterback must go down and go down hard. Raiders win.